Well, when I was a player, believe it or not, the scoreboard was the, the numbers were put up by hand in each inning. Sort of like the only one that's, that I believe is still left is the one in Fenway Park, where there's a guy inside the scoreboard and puts the uh, the numbers up for each inning. Um, do you remember anything that uh, happened up on the scoreboard when, uh, like when you first started playing? No, because they had all you know they had all the other teams up there. And actually, there weren't near as many teams as there are now. And then they put the scores of the other teams up as they'd come in. And it was it was very interesting because when I was a kid, that's the only way we could see the World Series. They would have a big board on Times Square. I don't know whether you, anybody ever told you about it. First, it was a big board, and they'd have uh, miniature ball players on it, and whoever was broadcasting the game would broadcast it to this guy that was working it, and the, and he would move the players. If it was a single, he'd move the players and a double and fly ball or something. And it was very interesting. The, the most interesting thing was there was no public address system in those days. Now, I don't know whether you're going to ask me about that later, but a, a man, Mr. Levy, used to come around with a megaphone like Rudy Valley. You don't even know who Rudy Valley. I don't know why I'm saying it. You young huckleberries don't know what, what happened way back then. But it was a big megaphone. And you'd start at home plate, say the batteries for today's game, Charlie Ruffing for the Yankees, and Mel Harder for the Indians. Then you go down the first baseline and do it there, and then down the third baseline, do it, and then walk out to the bleachers and do it there. That's the way they gave the starting lineups and the pitcher and the catcher. A lot of times you forget the count. And you want a ball, three strike to whatever it might be, and you look at the scoreboard. And a lot of times uh, at the end of each inning, uh, you look at the scoreboard because you, you kind of forget by doing the game each inning just exactly what the score is at the end of that inning. And, and in some ballparks, as soon as the inning's over, they, the numbers are erased and they put messages on the scoreboard. So if you're not quick and you don't write the score down, you, you got egg on your face. But the scoreboard was very important, uh, especially where it was situated out in center field or right center field in those days. Because it gave you an idea of, uh, you took a quick look to make sure how many were out. And then you knew who was coming up next. They'd have the hitters, you know, the batting order and everything. Before, just before I was through playing ball, my last two years, I used to look up at uh, Mel Allen and was in a booth at that time, a little booth there at the stadium up in the upper deck. And uh, I, I used to kind of envy him, you know, and say, gee, that's, you know, when I'm through, that's something I'd like to do. And then, and in, in my last two years, Casey Stengel would pinch hit for me a lot, and I'd get out of the game early. So. One day, Mel Allen asked me to come up and do an inning. And I, I ran up there, and I was terrible. Holy, and he left, but I got my feet wet, and I said, boy, this is what I want to do. I'm going So I asked Mel, how can I? So he, Mel said to me, well, look, he said, there are two other teams in the uh, New York City. You know, the Giants and the Dodgers were there, and then the Yankees, and there's always a game. He says, when you get home, you turn the sound off on your TV. It's going to be very difficult, and it is if you try to do a game off a of TV. Turn the sound off. Get yourself a little uh, 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 recorder and a microphone and do the game and then play it back and see how you made out and the mistakes you made. And I tell you, that really helped me a lot. And I would do the game. And then a lot of times I'd come here and uh, when I got, was out of the game, and do it on my own little recorder. And then Mel would still ask me to uh, to uh, do some innings up there, and I'd run. And, and then when, when I was released, the year I was released in 1956, for the last month, the Giants, WPIX asked me to do some giant games that they were televising from the polo grounds. And I did them with uh, Roy Campanella at the time. And that was a big thrill. And then the very next, that winter, I was asked by the Baltimore Orioles and and a couple other clubs if I wanted to be their broadcaster. And then finally, uh, they, they said to me, uh, the, the Yankees came to me, Ballantyne came to me, said, how would you like to do the Yankee game? Well, it was a lot less money than the other clubs had offered. And I jumped at it. It was tough breaking in with them. Nobody thought I'd last.